What's going on guys? I'm Brandon, founder of the TRT community. Today we're going to talk about TRT side effects and how to avoid them. So before we jump into the main topic, I wanted to go over a few things. First, I like to try to think back on wins in my life that I believe are associated with TRT. A few weeks ago, we went to this big corporate leadership event, and um, the win there was that we were doing all these role-playing games with these really high-level executives, and it was easy. It's something that I would have I mean, I would have been devastated about in the past, but this was just simple. It was easy. I was able to step up and take on, you know, a leadership role in the same room as the actual leaders of my company. And and I work for a large company. This isn't a company where like, you know, the CEO I get FaceTime with. This was, you know, this is a, a very large company. So anyway, I considered that a win. It was actually a really cool event. Second announcement, second win, we've made our way onto Reddit. I don't really participate on Reddit often, but I did notice the other day a friend of mine sent me a screenshot of somebody dropping a podcast link on Reddit. So that's pretty cool. As I'm saying this, it feels like I'm like I'm bragging. I don't feel like this is my accomplishment. This isn't something that I have done. This is a group accomplishment and I wouldn't have any content if it weren't for the members of the TRT community for the podcast or for YouTube. So without you guys, the TRT community is nothing. So we're winning together. That's that. As always, you can email me for doctor recommendations, brandon at trtcommunity.com. You can go to speakpipe.com slash TRT community if you want to leave a voice message. Rate the show, subscribe to the show, review the show. We've got a new podcast website, testosteronepodcast.com. We've got TRT Supplies listed up there, linked up there. We've got research studies linked up there, a blog. And then last announcement, I get asked this question all the time. And if you missed the Facebook watch party yesterday, a friend of mine recommended a needle disposal tool to me that is amazing. Guys always want to know where we keep our supplies and how we dispose of needles. Those are the two questions that everyone wants to know. So I'll link this product in the description below. If you're on YouTube or in the description also below, if you're listening on the podcast, full disclosure, all the proceeds, they are affiliate links, but all the proceeds are going to go back into the TRT community for get togethers, meetups, giveaways, that kind of thing. I'm not going to profit off of this. I guess I could tell you what the thing is. It's tiny. You stick the needle in the side of it. You snip the needle off. You keep the tiny thing. You throw away the syringe that no longer has a needle and you're done. It's pretty cool. So in today's video slash podcast, I want to address common side effects that you might experience after starting TRT and teach you how to avoid them. This is what you need to know before you start TRT. Dialing in takes time and dialing in takes work. Being dialed in means you don't have side effects or at least you don't have enough to speak of. So potentially the answer to the question is you can have no negative side effects and still be on TRT. The guys that experience the most side effects are generally the ones that are doing protocols that require larger doses of T combined with infrequent injection schedules. So testosterone cypionate has a half-life of around eight days. This means that after eight days, half of your dose is still bioavailable, the other half is not. So it also means that at the very least, you should be injecting every eight days. So I'm not really getting into protocols that fall outside of that. If you're on an every 10 day, every 14 day, every 30 day, that's not really, you know, you're going to continue to have side effects. But if you're on every eight days, we can help. Some guys say they have success with every 10 days, but I wonder if they would feel even better at eight days. Anyway, so... A very common dosing schedule is one time weekly or every 10 days. And on either one of those protocols, you might feel great for six to eight weeks, but then your prolactin begins to rise, your estradiol begins to rise because you're doing 200 milligrams once a week or once every other week. It causes a bit of that roller coaster effect. That's that's what we call it within your hormones. On this protocol, you may experience elevated estradiol, elevated prolactin, elevated hematocrit. Those are the things that generally cause acne, fatigue, headaches, blurred vision, erectile dysfunction. Um, That's most of the common ones. I'm sure that there's some outliers out there. Um, And obviously there are other factors, but we're just covering the basics today. So if you get there, 
the acne, the ED, etc. You can manage those side effects with additional medications or you can avoid them. So some of the additional medications, aromatase inhibitors for the estradiol, cabergoline for prolactin, you can donate blood to manage your hematocrit and you'll be fine, right? But why take more medications than you have to? Plus, cabergoline and aromatase inhibitors are harsh and they're hard to dial in themselves. It's a drug they give to cancer patients. You can avoid using those. If you're willing to spend the time and do the work required to get dialed in, the side effects are minimal to non-existent. The key to dialing in is maintaining the most consistent levels possible. In my opinion, that means that you need to be injecting as often as you can. Small sub-Q doses are way easy to do and avoid nearly all, n- avoid nearly all, if not all, of any of the side effects that I've mentioned. Daily injections, you know, those are probably the best. They're not necessary for everyone. I don't do daily injections. I do two, I kind of bounce back and forth between every uh, tw- two and three times weekly, but I still have to donate blood fairly regularly. I get headaches after about three and a half months of not donating blood. So if you want to rid yourself of all these things, just do every day or every other day injections and tiny, tiny little sub Q injections, and you should be fine. I firmly believe that no matter how good your doctor is, unless he's seeing you every single week, you're going to need some additional support. You're going to need to do the majority of the work yourself. You're going to need education. You're going to need someone to help you. Uh, most doctors are going to see you every three months, maybe even every six months, and that's that's not going to work. It doesn't matter how good he is. He's not going to be able to tell you on day eight this, on day nine this. You're going to need to be researching and documenting your experiences so that you'll know how to adjust, what to adjust, why to adjust, and when to adjust. That's just what I think makes the TRT community such an asset. We aren't doctors, but there are a lot of experienced guys in our Facebook group. So I challenge you to use it as a shortcut to help yourself getting dialed in. I'll link uh, to the site in the description below um, and from there to our new website. And from there, you can join the Facebook group. And obviously, it's free. I'm not trying to sell you anything. So that's really it. I appreciate you watching and listening today. This video hopefully helped you kind of quickly understand that you can get dialed in. It's not impossible. It is hard work. And... We've got a place where you can get help, uh, but but the takeaway here is that the main factor is small, frequent dosing. Anyway, that's all I got today. Have a great day.